This is part two of the state minimization video for finite state machines. And we're taking a look at an example here of a 20 cent candy dispenser that accepts uh, dimes and quarters and uh, dispenses 20 cent candy and gives credit if there is um, too much uh, money put in. So the simple vending machine that we consider here accepts dimes uh, meaning sen 10 cents and quarters, each quarter 25 cents, and it releases a candy if 20 cents or more have been deposited. The machine doesn't give any change, but any amount over 20 cents uh, can be used towards another candy purchase, so you get credit uh, for the next purchase. Here's an initial state diagram for that uh, candy machine or that candy dispenser. The reset state is S1, and we stay in S1 as long as no coins are being put in there. So that is uh, shown here by the self loop around S1, and uh, Q0 uh, ended with D0, meaning that we neither have a quarter nor a dime being put in. Okay, the candy machine is a mechanical machine, and so things are happen relatively slowly in that. Um, mechanical part of the candy dispenser and the electronic part uh, can go much faster so the electronics will stay in those states that we indicate here uh, oftentimes for several clock cycles until the next coin is being deposited. Another feature is that the candy machine just has one slot for coins and so you can put in either a dime or a quarter but not both at the same time. Okay, so if we are in that state S1 and we put in a dime, then we have uh, 10 cents towards our candy purchase. And then if we put in another, oh, let's see, now we lost it. Here we go. Okay, so if we put in another dime, then we have uh, deposited 20 cents. And so the state here is shown with a red circle around it that indicates that C is equal to 1 and that means that one of the candies is being dispensed. And once that gets uh, dispensed in state S4, then we go back to state um, S1, uh, irrespective of whether there is any dimes or quarters being put in. In fact, because it's a mechanical machine, uh, once the dime goes in, then uh, it releases the candy, and by the time you could put in the next coin, the candy is probably already uh, released from the machine. If you're in, if you have been putting in a dime, and then as the next thing you put in a quarter, then you're going to have um, more than the twenty cents that's necessary. So you have actually at this point in time, and you're down here, you have been putting in thirty-five cents altogether. So you get the candy. Uh, which is equal to 1, but you also have credit now, so you go to state S7, which reflects that credit of 15 cents that you have at this point in time. So if you put in another dime, for example, then you have uh, 25 cents, so that gives you another candy, and you now you still have credit 5 cents, so you go back up here, and uh, if you then uh, put in, for example, another dime, and yet another dime, you end up back in state S8 again, because you still have now a credit of 5. If you want to use up all your credits, so you would have to go back here, um, uh, for example, from the 5 that we had here. So the 5 that we have in state S6, if we add a quarter to that, then we have 30 cents, so that gives us a candy. Now we have a credit of 10. And if we then uh, put in another dime, uh, then we have a, a 20 cents. And we go into state S10, and the candy is released. And then from state S10, we actually go back to state S1, where we now have used up all our credits. The maximum that we can do is um, if we put in a quarter, 
and then uh, we get one candy and so now we have a credit of uh, five then we put in a dime for example so now we have um, uh, 15 and then we put in a quarter so now we got 40 cents so we get the candy here in state s9 and then from state S9 we go to state S10, so we get the second candy. Then from state S10, as we have seen before, we go back to state S1, and then we have used up our credit. So here's the initial state table for the 20 cent candy finance state machine. So we have the present state. Altogether we have 13 states, S1, S2, etc., up to S13. State S1 is the reset state. And from state S1, we can either stay in state S1 when no coins are, deposited, are being deposited, or we can go uh, into state S2 if we deposit the dime, or state S3 when we deposit the quarter. And in each of those cases, the output is still uh, zero because we haven't deposited enough for the candy to dispense when we are in state S1. Okay, when we are in state S2, we can stay in state S2 if no coins are being put into the machine. We can go to state S4 if a dime is being put in, or state S5 if a quarter is put in. And then if you are in state S3, which we would have if we just go from state S1 and deposit the quarter, then a candy gets dispensed, so C is equal to 1, and we go to state S6 because we have a credit of five cents at this point in time. In state S4, we go back to state S1. So state S4 is the one we get into if we put in two dimes. So a candy is being released, and then we go back to state S1 and have no credit for further candy. Uh, state S5, um, we get into if we put in a dime first and then a quarter. And so a candy is being released, we go to state S7 because we now have credit and then from S7 we can go either stay in S7, go to S8 or S9 and so forth. You can see that there are dashes in here and uh, the dashes are basically don't care conditions. So um, we know that uh, we cannot put in uh, diamond and the quarter at the same time, so that's why the last column here is all dashes. And then in the cases where a candy is being released, um, we just simply uh, in the, uh, go to the state S3, for example, where a candy is being released, and then immediately move on to state S6, and we do not take any inputs here from the um, coin uh, slot from the finite state machine you can see that all of those which do not take any further coins are the ones where candy is being dispensed and all those which have uh, three um, different possibilities are the ones where we actually do not dispense a candy but we move on to some of the next states. So now the minimization procedure we start out with partition P1, which contains all the states, S1 up to S13. Then we split it up into those states which produce an output of 0, which are S1, S2, S6, S7, S12, and those which produce an output of 1, which are S3, 4, 5, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 13. And those states where we um, take coins, uh, we have three different types of successors, depending on whether uh, QD, uh, quarters and dimes, or that is 0, 0, 0, 1, or 1, 0. So we have 0, 0 successors, which for S1, S2, S6, S7, S12, or S1, S2, S6, S7, S12, so that's the self loops around those states. Then we have the 0, 1 successors, S2, S4, S7, 8, and, and 10. And we have the 1, 0 successors, S3, 5, 11, 9, and 13. We again use different colors for the different um, uh, sets that we have here, or the different blocks. 
And so the, the blue block, uh, you can see that the self loops here we stay within the blue block, but then uh, if uh, a dime is being put into the machine, we have states S2 and S7, which are in that same uh, blue block, but S4, S8, and S10 are in the green block. So that will give us a partition of this blue block here into S1 and um, S6 because of the differences that we have here. So those two states, uh, let's see, let's erase this one here. Okay, so S1 and S6, those have the same kind of, uh, or the successors in the same uh, uh, sets here, whereas um, S2, S7, and S12 have successors in uh, different blocks. And so we partition here S1 and S6 is going to be one new block and S2, S7, S12 is another new block. So the blue block gets uh, partitioned into what we have uh, for a blue block and a light blue uh, block down here. Then we look at the others. Those are the states where the candy is being dispensed and then we go on into uh, specific states that uh, reflect the credit that we have after the candy is being dispensed. So we have S3, S4, 5, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 13. And when we look at this, the successor states are S6, S1, S7, S6, and there is the S10 here, which is from a different block. And then S1, S12, and S7 is from the first block again. So we can see that we make a partition here based on S10 um, being a different kind of successor than the others. And so that means that uh, back here S9 uh, cannot be in the same block as the other states that we have here. So we have now partition into S3, 4, 5, 8, 10, 11, 13, and S9. And then we continue now we look at block S1, the S1, S6 block, and we do the 0, 0, 0, 1, and 1, 0 successors again. So we can see that the 0, 0 successors are both in the same block. The 0, 1 successors are in the same block, and the 1, 1, uh, 1 0 successors are in the same block. So S1 and S6 will stay together at this point. Then we look at S2, S7, S12. And we find that the 0, 0 successors are in the same block. The 0, 1 successors are in the same block, but the 1, 0 successors, one of them is in a different block. And so we split that up into S2, S12 as one block and S7 as another block that just contains S7. And then we look at um, those states where the candy is being dispensed and where we only have um, one successor. So here we have S6, S1 uh, are in the same block, and here S6, S1 again. So those are in the same block, but then S7, S12, and S7 are in a different block. So we partition that into, uh, let's say those are the odd ones out. So we have S5, S11 and S13 that go into a block of their own and the other ones remain in the block S3, S4, S8 and S10. And then S9 was already left as a, as a state with, with its own block. So that is now partition 4. We have now 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 blocks. And at this point S1 and S6 may be uh, equivalent. S2 and S12 may be equivalent. S3, 4, 8, and 10 may be equivalent, and 5, 11, 13 may be equivalent. So those we have to test further. So we do that down here. S1 and S6, um, we break up now based on partition 4. Or we, we look at the uh, successors and then break it up potentially. So we can see the 0, 0 successors, S1 and S6, are in the same block. But the uh, 0, 1 successors, S2 and S7, are in different blocks. And the 1, 0 successors, S3, S11, 
or in different blocks also. So that means S1 and S6 cannot possibly be uh, equivalent and they will now go into a block of their own. Then S2 and S12, those we actually find um, each of the K successors goes uh, has um, states in the same block and so we can keep S2 and S12 together. Then S3, 4, 8 and 10, they all go, uh, the, the successors here all go to the same block so they will stay together. But S5, S11 and S13, we have one here which goes to a different block uh, for its successor. And so S11 will become separated from S5 and S13. So that's what we get here at the next step. We have S1 and S6 separate, S2 and S12 stay together. S7 um, is separate. Uh, and then S3, S4, S8 and S10, those stay together. S5 and S13, so those are the two from here that stay together, but S11 goes into its own block and S9 was already in its own block before. So we have one more step to do. We have now to look at S2 and S12. It turns out they have all their successors, uh, the 00, 0 successor in the same block, the 0, 01 successor, uh, those are in their same block and the 10 successors are in the same block as well. So those we do not split up, we keep them. Then we find S3, S4, S8 and S10 now actually have successors that are in two different types of blocks. And so we have to take S3 and S8 and put those into one block and S4 and S10 and put them into a separate block. So here is S3, S8 and here is S4, S10. And after that we have no more changes. So P6 is the last partition and we have now 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 states. So we reduced the number of states from 13 to 9. And we have found that S2 is equal to S12, S3 is equal to S8, S4 is equal to S10, and S5 is equal to S13. And by combining those states into a single state, uh, we retain a functionally equivalent finite state machine. In this case, a functionally equivalent uh, 20 cent candy dispenser. So now we get the new minimized state table. We do the same thing like we did before. We use those equivalences that we just found for the states and we replace, uh, for example, what did we find here? For example, S3 is equal to S8. So in the original table, when it says S8, we just replace that by S3. We do the same thing for S2, S12, S4, S10. And the last one here is S5 and S13. So whenever we see S12 in the original table, we replace it by S2. If we see S10, we replace it by S4. If we see S13, we replace it by S5. And that gives uh, this kind of table here. We can make that into a minimized state diagram. So that now looks um, uh, a little more handy than the, the other one. And we can see that we have a similar behavior here. So if you put in a dime, then we go from state S1 to S2. So this is the reset state up here. We go into S2, so we have 10 cents and then another dime will give us a candy and we go back into state S1. If in state S2 we put in a quarter, then we have now 35 cents. We go into state S5, we get the candy and we get the credit of 15 cents. If we put in another quarter after we have a credit of 15 cents, then we have 40 cents. So we get two candies out and go back into state S1 
if instead that's one we put in the quarter then we get the candy we get the credit of five cents and in fact what we can see here is that here we have a credit of zero cents here we have a credit of 10 cents then here we said 10 plus 25 is 35 minus 20 that gives us a credit of 15 cents here if we put in a dime when we have a credit of 15 cents we get the candy and go back to this state so here we have a credit of five cents so we can actually see one way how we could have arrived directly at this diagram is by just focusing on uh, how much money uh, there is currently and uh, label the states according to that if we want to minimize the number of states further then we can use a merely finite state machine and we can release the candy as we make the transitions from one state to another so here is the resulting state diagram for that this is again the reset state So state S1, if we put in a dime, then uh, nothing comes out yet. We are in state S2, so here we have a 10 cent credit. And then if you put in another dime, then the candy gets released. So we have here a D slash 1, and we are back in state S1 with no more credit. If we put in a quarter, then we uh, immediately re release the candy. So we have a Q slash 1 here. And then, uh, because we paid 25 cents, we now have a credit of 5 cents. And if we put in a dime when we have a credit of 5 cents, then we have now 15 cents. So this is the state where we have 15 cents credit. So we don't release a candy yet. Um, so it's a slash zero. And then if we put in another dime, then we do release a candy. And now we get the credit of 5. If we put in a quarter in that state, then we do release a candy. And because now we have actually a total of 40 cents, we have to have another state S9 here, where we release another candy when we move from state S9 to state S1. You can see there is a dash here in front, so this doesn't require putting any more money in. Uh, we just simply follow the convention here that the output is either 0 or 1. We could have said the output could be 0, 1, or 2, and then we could have made eliminated S9 and gone directly from S7 to S1 um, and released two candies.